So Marvin, oh, yeah. in the wake of everything that's going on in the recent events with George Floyd and, and uh, talk and conversation in the media about racism, I really am grateful to have you here today to, to help educate and talk us through um, some of some to help me understand some of the differences um, that people and questions that people probably have <coughs> on their minds up, mm. about this. Because me personally, as I see this, it makes me really sad um, as a country to be divided over race. And it's it's not a something that I was raised or exposed to, and I have a lot of questions. And I was, I was, we recently had a conversation and you were sharing, which piqued my interest to want to take this to a whole nother level. And sure. what really, what you were doing was challenging us to take action, not just going on social media and posting something out there, but taking legitimate steps to help us move forward and closer together uh, to, to help solve this. And I'd love it if you could just, frame or share that here with us today. And then I'd like to get into a couple other questions to go a little bit deeper on this topic. Great. Thanks uh, very much, Cody. Uh, this is certainly um, a very important topic. Uh, thanks for uh, being willing to uh, lead a conversation on this. It's, it's extraordinarily important. And so uh, I hope today that we can um, add value in really taking this conversation forward. I think we are at an inflection point here in this country. Uh, <clears throat> not that this is the only inflection point that we've had or will ever have, but there is something very um, significant about where we are, the level of consciousness that has developed over the last uh, two weeks that is in stark contrast to any place that we've been in recent history. Uh, and, and so perhaps it's just the cataclysmic experience of 2020 that itself is adding to some of this, right? Some of the tension around the pandemic, uh, some of the concern about uh, the young man who was shot in Georgia, and then this vivid, um, almost too painful to watch uh, eight, nine minute video of a young man who was uh, killed. And so it brings us to once again, to deal with the, the, the skeletons of our country. The skeleton, the, probably the biggest skeleton of our country is the issue on how we deal with people who are different, how we deal with the issue of race. And in this country, more often than not, that is black versus white or black and white, right? Uh, and because of the, the long history of subjugation, 400 years of slavery, uh, Jim Crow laws, um, decimating gains that were made after slavery and the reconstruction, um, the uh, institutionalization of forces to go after African Americans, the civil rights struggle, the tumult, the tumult of the 1960s, um, all of that, it hasn't properly or, or been really fully dealt with in this country. And so uh, this tipping point that we're at really does challenge all of our sensibilities, both black and white. And there's a question, there's kind of an embedded question. How do I, as a person who is a decent person, a person of goodwill, how do I respond to this? How do I, what do I feel about this, right? And then if I'm going to use, a, use my moment of influence or my position of influence uh, as a leader, formally or informally, what do I begin to do about this? So um, my concern in all of this is that we don't lose this moment of inflection, which so often happens. Let me tell you what that looks like. So that looks like 
plat platitudinal arguments and statements that cause people to feel good and to feel like that they have done something. But in many cases, it was a statement that was convenient without necessarily doing the hard and systemic work on the issue that was here long before the last two major incidents. And so my concern is that people of goodwill, organizations who want to do the right thing, move beyond just platitudinal statements and really get to the hard work. We're seeing major corporations right now make statements. Well, we've never seen it like this before. But if all we do is make statements and we don't do the hard work to deal with the systemic issues, six months from now, a year from now, we'll have to deal with something again. So that's, that's my concern about kind of where we are, but it also is an opportunity for people like you and others and me to really start doing something to make a difference. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's powerful and, and so very true. So thank you for sharing that, Marvin. Um, a couple of questions that I have, and this is more to, I think, really to help educate us more than anything. And one of those things is the, right, the stark difference when you and I are walking down the street together, <clears throat> a, a very obvious known difference, and that's the color of our skin. And regardless if we're walking on the street, walking into a store, walking into a meeting or a boardroom at work, right, people see that. And sometimes they may not verbalize it, but it probably is on top of their mind and they're thinking of it. And I guess the question I have is, how do you address that? Do you even address that? And I guess help me walk through from your perspective of ways to, to just handle that. Yeah, you know, what just came to my mind was years ago, um, I, uh, I, along with another gentleman, uh, would go into jails, a uh, jail in Michigan, and we would go in and talk to the inmates. Uh, my partner in this effort was uh, a white guy, Jewish guy, and uh, we just, we had a, an incredible bond, an incredible time of going in talking to inmates uh, and, uh, and, and doing jail ministry. And it was always, it, for me, it was like fun to just, as we're driving, you know, the 30, 40 miles to go to the jail, and then maybe we might stop and get a Coke or something. And here you'd see a black guy and a white guy get out of a car together. And it was just kind of like humorous. And most people would probably think that we were police because you just don't see that. You just don't see a black guy and a white guy get out of a car together, right? That's just, just doesn't happen unless you're in some kind of conscripted situation like, you know, law enforcement where you're, you know, there with your partner or, or in the military or something like that. So how unfortunate that it is so unusual for us to see images of black and white people in this country getting out of a car together, <laughs> going to a restaurant and, and sitting down and having a meal, or, or a black couple, or a white couple, or in a married couple, whatever the case is. It, it's unfortunate that today, even today, it raises eyebrows. So how do we deal with that? So I think that there's a couple of thoughts here. And this is, I believe, part of the hard work of personal growth. And that is this. You and I have to challenge the assumptions that have shaped our environment, even if they weren't given to us by our parents per se. We have lived in a country which has created norms around culture, around race, which are really unfortunate and bad. 
and wrong, right? And, and so whether or not, you know, my parents did or your parents did, that's not the question. The real issue is, real issue is how have we all been affected by the norms around race, around the norms around culture, in, in a way that oftentimes we're unconsciously operating in and not even knowing it, okay? So, and, and this is some deep work here, Cody. We don't have time today, unfortunately, to, to go that deep. But one, I will just say some practical things. One, we need to be willing to challenge the assumptions with which we were developed in this country around race. And we know what they are. We know what they are. Black people are. White people are. We all can fill in the blank, right? Because we've all we've all heard them and they've become a part of our psyche. We have to challenge those. The second thing is in challenging them, we have to use as a basis for challenge our belief in the fundamental equality of people. That's my basis. That can be my basis for challenging those assumptions, those beliefs and attitudes about race and culture. Everyone, which was interesting, and it didn't even apply to black people at the time in which it was written, but all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, right? That's an incredible statement, it didn't apply to black people, but it's still a, it's a very important and true statement. So if we could just start there, what are my beliefs and attitudes and the norms by which I have grown up? Can I challenge any one of them on the basis of the fundamental equality? And when I see situations that do not comport with that fundamental new belief that everyone is equal, I say something, I challenge it. I don't be silent anymore. All right, let me stop there. That was a long answer. Whew, man. Yeah, but Marvin, that was, that was huge, right? Because you're absolutely right. We, there is norms, right? We are conditioned by many yeah. external and outside factors, regardless right. of how you grew up, what you saw on TV, what school you went to, right? There's so right. much out there. And that right. is years and years and years with really out aiming, probably knowing or understanding that exactly. we've been conditioned and exactly. you're getting into a, a deeper a, something deeper here of a core of that we start to change and move forward how do we change this right that's the question yes. and it's yeah. how do you recondition these norms and, and unfortunately that isn't a light switch moment in a lot of people it takes yeah. time but this is a, a like you said a great opportunity for us to start to be aware of and build in those new norms or the conditioning that brings it so it's so it's normal, right? It, it, it's normal that a black man and a white man get out of a car together and there would never be a question. I, I think of our my son and he's he's three years old and he has another three-year-old son and they don't see color. Right, they are one. One is white, and the other one is black, and they don't see color in each other. And it's the most amazing thing when they get together of how happy they are, and they give each other a huge hug. That there's no difference. So it's ac absolutely learned or taught through conditioning yeah. that is just the environment that they may be in. And I really, appre I really appreciate you sharing that with me. That's a yeah. big takeaways I'm just reiterating what you're sharing that yeah. I've taken away yeah. um, from this good. Good so, um, how are you doing on time Marvin you got to get good for your next one you're good okay good. So, I want to ask you one more question and the question I guess I'm not sure if it's more of a cultural question but or a, a race question and that question revolves more around there's the one difference is obviously our skin color. That's very obvious. But there's also differences regardless of what ethnicity or background you come from. 
um, I would say the the white um, white American has a subset of culture of how they operate, and they can operate in multiple different cultures, really, right? Depending upon uh, where you fall, I guess, in terms of uh, maybe your 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 income level, which is is as sad as that may say. Um, you got the African American culture, you got the Hispanic culture, and being uh, in America, land of the free, right? You're welcome and invited to act and participate in that culture. But with multiple cultures comes lots of differences as well from the way we dress, maybe the way we talk, the music we listen to. Again, a lot of these norms, as you mentioned earlier, how do we fit, right, in your mind when <laughs> We don't look at one culture as wrong or bad just because it's different, but how do we how do we look at it as and be accepting of it, even though it's different than ours? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's a that's a great question. And so before I <clears throat> answer that, let me say that historically in this country, there are methods of cultural adaptation, and the one kind of major method of cultural adaptation was assimilation. And that was where the dominant culture um, really required that in order to participate in the systems, you had to lose your inherent cultural orientation and adopt that of the dominant culture. So that's assimilation had been the dominant way that different cultures adapt. And of course, that's pretty challenging and very, very stressful. And it's also, um, it, it also takes away from the notion of the inherent value of one's culture because it's different, right? It's somehow less than or inferior if I have to lose that in order to become part of the dominant. Now, that's how many people who are different, minorities and others, have made it in life, have made it in corporate, and have been able to have some level of tenuous success. I say that carefully, tenuous success, because the assimilation model forces you to always be like the dominant group. So as we think about as corporate corporations began to wrestle with this over the last 20 years, they began to understand that we can't force people to assimilate into this dominant culture, white male oriented culture, but rather we have to acknowledge their legitimacy. And so notions around pluralism, but so you're, you have yours, I have mine, and, uh, and, and so those kind of things began to be acknowledged as valuable, right? And so that looks like organizations creating, you know, like African-American groups within corporations or Hispanic groups within organizations, et cetera. And so then maybe we have a, you know, Black History Day or, 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 or whatever the case might be. And so we, we, we're trying to create kind of side-by-side -side pluralistic systems. But once again, that's progress over assimilation, but it really doesn't lead us into kind of the full recognition and appreciation of differences. So then we have to, we have to stop and say, so what is the mechanism by which we can have differences uh, that can be integrated as the model as opposed to assimilation. And that, that, that ability to do that is the recognition that just because you're different doesn't mean you are wrong or bad. It just means you're different. That's all. It just means you're different. And those two kids that you just talked about, your, your child and the other child, over time, they will begin to recognize that they are different. They will begin to recognize over time, oh, you have straight hair, or your hair is a little kinky, or 
you know, your skin is different than mine, right? They'll, 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 they'll begin to acknowledge and appreciate those differences, <clears throat> but hopefully they will be able to do so from the standpoint of saying, you're different and that's okay, right? Um, as opposed to, oh, there's something inherently flawed <clears throat> or wrong um, with your difference such that I have to assert my dominance over your difference and force you to become like me. So I think the question is a fair question and I think it goes back to men and women of good heart who are willing to say, not just willing to say, but willing to act and appreciate the value of other people's cultural experience as being equal and legitimate to their own. It's not bad, wrong, right, or good. It's just different. It's just different. And oh, how incredible the creativity is when it's different. <clears throat> You know, if, if, if every wall was the color of the wall behind me, man, that'd be pretty boring, right? If every wall was the color of the wall behind you, that'd be pretty boring. But fortunately, all of these things have their place in adding value to the whole. Wow. Yeah, that's my... Wow, <clears throat> Marvin, you said that so well uh, and elegantly to package that. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that with, with me and uh, with all of us. That has just been awesome, absolutely awesome. So that is all we have for our time here today, Marvin. I just wanna thank you so much for addressing those questions. I obviously have a lot more and I'm sure a lot of us do, uh, but right, one of my actions that I'm taking is to continue mm -hmm. this conversation to learn. I absolutely yeah. wanna learn. And that, this is a, a step in that direction and just being open-minded, right? It's just, it sounds so simple, but yet it's not easy, right? It's simple, it's just not easy. And uh, that's another action that I'm gonna take is to be more forward in getting to know and learning people that are different uh, than my own color or my own culture, whatever it may be, because man, when you get, we all have our own unique abilities, right? And when they come together, some amazing things can happen. And if we looked at it from that lens or that point of view um, versus differences as bad, wow, watch out, right? Watch out. So thanks a lot, Marvin. I really appreciate you and being and sharing here today. Thanks, uh, Cody, and uh, uh, for your leadership in instigating this conversation. And I hope that it adds value and that we continue to press the envelope on what must I do? How do I process and effect change as a human and as a leader? And you just said one thing that I want to highlight, and that was the intentionality around developing relationships with people outside of your own cultural experience. But I'll tell you what, when you start to do that, it won't always be easy, and there may be some fits and starts, and, uh, and, and there may be challenges along the way. But if you can commit to that lifelong journey of doing that, you're going to find yourself growing as a person and growing in appreciation of other people and their culture. And let me tell you one quick secret, and that is this. One of the best ways to do that is to sit down and break bread with somebody the table becomes an equalizer and it creates an incredible environment for growth to happen. So when all of this pandemic is over, find an opportunity and go break bread with somebody who's totally different and, uh, and listen and learn. Thanks so much. Love it. Thanks, Marvin.